in this session uh, we will study about the boundary conditions so you know that for electric uh, uh, there will be permeability and perme permittivity like for electric and magnetic field so so from uh, with that from medium to medium it, there will be uh, there will be a difference right so we are considering about two we will take two mediums and we will define based on the boundary condition so for electric field as well as magnetic field we will see the boundary conditions okay uh, when, when i explain you will understand more now i just give you an idea so boundary conditions for electric field let's see the boundary conditions for the electric field first topic is for electric field so uh, you know electric field is denoted by simple e so we will consider two regions so let this be region 1 and let this be region 2 and the dielectric permittivity of two regions for the first region it is epsilon 1 dielectric first permittivity epsilon 1 and the second region it is epsilon 2 so we have two regions and we will consider a surface here covering both the regions that is region 1 and region 2 so you know that the upper part the permittivity is epsilon 1 and for the lower part the permittivity is epsilon 2 so what we are supposed and i write epsilon is the dielectric permittivity so epsilon is the dielectric permittivity so now we will move ahead with the explanation so what does that say here we need to find the nature of the electric field intensity as well as electric flux density so to find the nature of electric field intensity e and electric flux density and electric flux density d when the surface is in two different mediums with two different dielectric materials so we find the nature of electric field i am not writing everything so you know that the surface we need to find the electric field intensity as well as the electric flux density involved with this surface when it is in two regions region 1 and region 2 so here uh, what we uh, what we say that what we uh, the idea is like the electric field will be having two components so the total electric field have two components first one a tangential component so it will have a tangential component similarly it will have a normal component so it will have a tangential component and it will have a normal component so if a theory question comes uh, explain the boundary conditions for electric field you should write all these stories with a neat diagram you should say uh, we have a region one we have a region two epsilon one is the permittivity of region one so all these things you should write okay don't skip anything don't keep things in your mind like okay uh, are you, you assume in your mind that this is uh, region one and it's permittivity epsilon one but it's better you write down that also that's what is expected from you when you write a theory question for an analytical paper okay you should say what is what uh, something you mentioned here you say you should uh, mention that uh, so epsilon is equal to this uh, so like that you should mention okay so it has a tangential component and normal component so what we can write so e is equal to is equal to e tangential plus e normal so i'm not going into the derivation at all it's not required for you so e tangential into e normal and also we know that flux density d is equal to epsilon into e when coming to magnetic field so but in your syllabus this boundary condition for electric field is mentioned in module 3 i don't know why it should have been in module 2 so you're studying both things together so d is equal to epsilon e there it was b is equal to mu into h so electric uh, uh, 
flux density d is equal to epsilon in e. So we can write e is equal to d by epsilon. So the uh, the the result is that like when in two regions. So the first point is, you know that I told you there is a tangential component as well as there is a normal component. So the tangential component of region one will be equal to tangential component of region two. Similarly, one more uh, result we have epsilon one into normal component of region one is equal to epsilon two into normal component of region two. So now I am not going into the derivation. Let me check whether derivation is there required. I don't think that derivation is not. If derivation is required, means I will just teach you later. It's only some two, three steps, but uh, more, more important uh, from this uh, portion is the numerical problem. They may ask you uh, the theoretical question based on that without uh, proof and all, but more, uh, the most frequent question is a uh, uh, numerical problem based on this. So we'll solve that first. And then uh, if required, I will teach you the derivation. So, E ta uh, tangential one is equal to E tangential two and epsilon one into normal component of one is equal to epsilon two into normal component of two. Then uh, similarly, you can write for uh, flux density D also by using this relation, just divide that with epsilon. So that also I'll write here. So another uh, result which you can write is D tangential one by epsilon is equal to D tangential two by epsilon. So this epsilon factor you should keep in your mind because same thing uh, when we are when we were defining Gauss law and all. Many of you ask me doubts that you you have studied it, it as one by epsilon zero. So one by epsilon zero you have uh, you have studied means that was electric flux density. Okay, electric flux density and E is electric field intensity. So that difference you should have in your mind. Then D normal component of first region is equal to D normal component of second region. So that is the equations. Then one more. So here you have you had two regions, right? One region was uh, of, uh, of uh, permittivity epsilon one, and another region was of permittivity epsilon two. Now, if the two regions, if you end the region, one region was conductor, other region free space of iron angle in the sum if region one was conductor and region two was free space, what will be the result? Region one, region two. The first result, E tangential component and the parayana than a zero. And E normal component and the parayana, E normal component will be rho s by epsilon zero. Okay, so the figure will be. Uh, this is free space and this is conductor. Okay. And uh, similarly, uh, D tan will be equal to zero and D normal will be equal to rho s. Okay. So this is how uh, we uh, talk about. So this much knowledge is required. Only this much knowledge is required for solving problems. So that's why I directly went here. So you have two regions, tangential component and normal component. So we saw that uh, when it is a permittivity epsilon one and epsilon two, and similarly, when it is a permittivity, similarly, when the two regions, the one is conductor, and the other one is free space. So these two conditions, you should be uh, clear about that. So you know that uh, in electric field, when we are studying, we were talking about permittivity. And when it comes to magnetic field in density H, we will be talking about mu, which is the permeability. So we consider two region. That is one is medium one. The other one is medium two. So there is mu one, mu two, and we will consider a small surface here. Small surface here. 
and you also know that b is equal to mu into h so similarly uh, here also uh, it will have two components that is magnetic field intensity will have two components that is h tangential plus h normal tangential component and a normal component will be there so tangential component will be like h tangential 1 is equal to h tangential 2 and the normal component will be mu 1 into h n 1 is equal to mu 2 into h n 2 so these are the two things so based on this we will do uh, we we'll do numerical problems okay so these are the uh, magnetic uh, boundary conditions for